Hi, everybody. Good Friday night to you. Welcome inside the gym at Hightower High School in Missouri City, Texas, for VibeFortBend.com coverage of Fort Bend County basketball. I'm Roger Smith, and we've got a dandy for you. It's the Hightower Hurricanes, who have lost only once in District 24 5A play, taking on the Marshall Buffs, who are undefeated in District and very, very impressive. Both teams have scored over 100 points multiple times within the month of January. They're red hot, and they are ready to face each other. There's also the part of the story that Hightower's moving up to Class 6A next year, so the guys who get on the court tonight won't be facing each other in district games anymore, at least for a couple of years, and by then a lot of them will have graduated. So glad you are with us. And this Vipe Live presentation of Fort Bend High Tower and the Marshall Buffs is brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome, by First Tire and Automotive with four great locations in Fort Bend County for the best prices on tires and everything else your, your vehicle needs to run at its very best. You can visit firsttireandauto.com. By Archer Volkswagen on the Southwest Freeway, just inside the Sam Houston Tollway. They've been open since 1956, and they're ready to serve you. You'll feel like family when you're at Archer Volkswagen. And by the Needville Insurance Agency, you'll get the very best rate on your car and home insurance when you put the Needville Insurance Agency to work for you. Bradley Stavanaugh and his team shop dozens of carriers, so you pay the lowest premium possible. Call them at 979 793 7411 or go to needvilleinsurance.com it's time for the countdown to tip off show we'll talk with ronnie courtney the head coach of the buffs the the three-time state champion with two different schools in fort bend isd ronnie courtney the legend he'll be joining us momentarily we'll be right back on vipefortbend.com when you watch team usa go for the gold you don't just want wi-fi that's fast you want Michaela Schifrin fast. You want Eat My Powder Blink and you'll miss it. I ski faster than you drive fast. You want Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig power all your devices and watch every single wow-worthy moment fast. You want gig speed internet from Xfinity. Watch Team USA with Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig or get started with Xfinity 50 megabit per second internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. This offer ends March 31st, so go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Restrictions apply. Not available in all areas. New Xfinity Connect customers only. Equipment taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After one year, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gigabit internet and compatible gateway. Gig speed Wi-Fi is shareable across all devices. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Xfinity, proud partner of Team USA. Welcome to the countdown to tip off show. We're inside Hightower Gym and there are going to be a lot of folks in here tonight. Time to visit with Ronnie Courtney of the Buffs, whose team is undefeated in District 24 5A. Anything about this this game that gives you a, pick, a particular feeling about it, what you've seen in the last couple of days of practice? Uh, tonight's game is going to be a tough one. Uh, we stress a lot of defensive principles this week getting in preparation for this game because they're so athletic and you know you can't make very many mistakes against these guys but they're going to capitalize on every mistake that you make. One thing I, I want to avoid doing, I don't want to ask you too many historical questions, but you've seen it all as far as the greatest peaks of the glory days of Fort Bend ISD basketball. You've kind of led it, and we know that they're, they've sold every ticket they can sell for inside the gym tonight. Can you kind of take us back to a game or two in your career where it was just absolutely packed to the gills? Well, I go all the way back to Willow Ridge when we played in front of 20,000 plus in Austin. Uh, every game we had prior to getting to Austin was a sellout. Uh, I come to Bush High School and when the Twins were at Travis, every game we played against those guys was a sellout. So I'm kind of used to large crowds. I just hope my kids can get ad adapted to it and play in front of a large crowd. Well, I was thinking about, uh, you know, on, on the high tower side tonight, they had Caleb Douglas for a while, a very gifted athlete, but he knows he's going to play football at USC. He was getting double-figure rebounds for him. How has it changed the style that the, the Hurricanes play, and, and how does it affect what you do? Uh, we're going to do what we do. 
Uh, we don't really worry about what other people are doing. Uh, we have a system in place, and that system is what we do. And regardless of who they get and how they get it, that's fine. Uh, you got to play on both ends of the floor, so we'll see how he plays on both ends. I believe a couple of times in the last week and a half, the Hurricanes have scored 100. You scored 100 within the last week, and uh, you came real close to doing it a few days before that. But we're not going to see anything near 100 tonight, are we? That's a strong possibility because we both get up and down the floor. We can both score the basketball. So I expect a high scoring ball game with a lot of action. Well, Coach, uh, it's been a long time since I have been this excited for a, a regular season basketball game. So good luck to your team tonight and um, keep it rolling. Thank you so very much. All right, that is Ronnie Courtney of Marshall. Appreciate him joining us. And we will be back with Stephen Woods of the Hightower Hurricanes if we can find him because, like I said, it's crowded in here. Roger Smith with you on ViteFortBend.com. The atmosphere is absolutely electric, and we'll be back. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max, and OfficeDepot.com. Welcome back to the Countdown to Tip-Off show where before the game between Marshall and Hightower, they're doing things a little bit differently. Stephen Woods is the head coach, and I know that you've had to think not just about preparing for this game, but also the big crowd we're expecting. Um, what's kind of the, the tipping point that makes you realize that you have to empty out the gym after the sub-varsity games and then refill it? It came from the higher-ups in the district, but I think uh, they realized it was going to be a packed house. Last time we played Marshall, uh, the sub varsities played early, um, and there was a two-hour gap between the varsity and the last uh, sub varsity game. This one is on a, uh, a Friday night, and we had a full day of school, so we couldn't uh, play earlier. Um, so what they want to do is just empty everyone out and and those that are really not here to see the voice of the game They just kind of sticking around Hopefully they'll leave and other guys or other people who want to see the voice of the game will be able to get in Speaking of a full day of school. I saw something on the news where Aldine is not having Friday school I don't know if you took note of that, but as a coach would that be something that would be good something you'd prefer or would you rather have them at school where you know where they are? Well, being you know in season, especially this late in district, I want to be in school because we're on a routine, and I want to try to keep them on a routine. You know, us as coaches, we're also superstitious too. So um, them having, uh, I saw they had the next three Fridays off. Um, yeah, as as a as a coach, uh, as a teacher, we still have to come to work. So I prefer my players to be at school. Yes, I, I am well aware that teachers pretty much everywhere have to keep coming, even if they tell the kids that they don't have to come in. Is there anything about your, your team in particular that has changed in terms of style since the first meeting with the Buffs? I think that you had Caleb Douglas maybe at the time, but you don't now. Um, is there anything different about the way that you attack the basket and play defense? I think... Uh as the season has gone on, we've gotten better. Uh, we've a been able to dissect film on us, see what, we, what we're what we doing well, and we want to continue to do that. But it, it also gave us the opportunity to see what we were lacking and uh, and actually, you know, really focus on it and practice and work on it. And, um, and one of the things that we had to get better at was rebounding. And uh, so I, I think I think this game will be a little different. Um, last game it was you know uh, close throughout until the fourth quarter they made a run and ended up going up by double digits and we weren't able to recover. So if uh, if we can just play defense the way we played defense the first time, the whole thing is they out rebounding us. They also shot two, 32 free throws and we only shot nine. So hopefully the the calls will be even this game and. Uh, and let the best team win. Finally, Coach Woods, by the way, thanks for the visit always. We really appreciate it. Um, I, I don't usually ask too many coaches about rankings, but do you ever talk about those or think about those? Because I noticed that Marshall's at 11, Hightower's at 12. If the rankings are accurate, that's a pretty good matchup. But are these two teams really better and deserve to be ranked higher, do you think? 
Uh, ironically, I just learned something new today. I had no idea we were ranked 12th or they were ranked 11th. Um, you know, with this group, we don't have a quote-unquote superstar, and so the rankings really don't matter. Um, I, I think we have a great team. And my message to my guys, as long as we play together as a team and take care of our business on the court, all that other stuff will take care of itself. And to hear that we're ranked number 12 in the state, is, is, uh, that's evident of that. Because I, I, honestly, I had no idea. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed, uh, Crosby has 10 losses, but I think they're ranked 5th or 6th, something like that. Just seems a little bit odd, but uh, if you get to meet them again in the playoffs this year, I know you will be uh, looking for a little payback. Yes, that'll be fun. Um, I told my guys, you know, our short-term goal is to win district, so we have to uh, focus on Marshall right now, and and then uh, and then we have Foster, Kempner, and Willowridge, and Fulcher, and then we're gonna worry about the playoffs because we still have first round HISD school. So um, you know, it's one game at a time right now, and we just. Um, Last game, with the win last game, that was our seventh win in a row. And in order to win state, you must win seven in a row. So that was my message to my guys. You see, you can do it because uh, you've just done it. So we just got to keep uh, a grinding one game at a time and, uh, and let the chips fall where they may. All right. It's, we're done with the countdown to tip-off show because the players are on the floor. This took so long to get this thing started that, uh, well, they're not even going to introduce everybody, and the Marshall Buffs win the tap. Omani Ozin, running point guard, running to his left, gets to the free throw circle. His pass is tipped. It's in the corner. Chris Marshall launches one, and it's no good. Rebound comes down to the Canes, and it's Kyron Dock, but he's bumped by a teammate. Ball comes out, but he does manage to hang on to it. Wow, this is a fast start, isn't it? And here we go with the Hightower Hurricanes all on the offensive attack, and Jalen Blow blocks the shot of Aaron Williams. Aaron Williams, who's been battling back from a hand injury. I think that he is completely healed by now. Inbound pass to Milton Rice. Quick turnaround, no good. Rebound low for the Marshall Buffs. Here come the Buffs. Undefeated in district play. They kick it back out to Ozine. In and out with the shot from the top of the key. It's no good. Correction, that was Jalen Reedus. But Jalen Lowe steals one at the other end when Hightower is on offense. Long pass to Chris Marshall. dipsy do move inside off the glass for two points and the Marshall Buffs draw first blood in this big game in District 24-5A. We'll tell you more about the team's records and who's leading them and all that kind of stuff. Travion Hanna launches a three from the corner. No good, one and done. Chris Marshall all the way down the floor and scores. Good vision on the part of Chris Catchings, a 6'4 sophomore and now Hightower quickly back down the floor. They launch one with Ja'Cory Chapman Ball goes out of bounds and it belongs to the Buffs. 6.41 to go in quarter number one. It is four to nothing, Marshall on top. Long pass into low. Long pass forward over the head of Chris Catchings and out of bounds. A turnover by these Marshall Buffs. Marshall 21 and two overall and 10 and 0 in their district 24-5A games. They're ranked 11th in the state. High tower on offense, near the top of the key. There's a dribble drive to the hoop. Travion Hanna comes up short, but rebounds his own miss and gets a score after that. So High Tower's on the board. It is Marshall four and the Hurricanes two. Omani Ozin trying to move around his man, stops near the left elbow, pulls up, shoots a two. It is good. Six to two is the score. And quickly back down the floor, it is Travion Hanna. Beats everybody down the floor and goes to the rack and makes it six to four. Jalen Lowe dribbling it across the timeline where he's picked up by Kyron Dock right in front of the high tower bench and Lowe drives in, but a shot that was halfway down spun out. High tower got the rebound, but then Lowe secured the ball and went back to the hoop and scored to make it eight to four. Quickly back down the floor come the Hurricanes and off the glass. Just like that, it is Aaron Williams and a timeout taken. We'll take it with him. This is VipeFortMen.com, 8-6 Marshall with 5.34 to go in the first. When you watch Team USA go for the gold, you don't just want Wi-Fi that's fast. You want Michaela Schifrin fast. 
You want Eat My Powder Blink and you'll miss it? I ski faster than you drive fast. You want Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig? Power all your devices and watch every single wow-worthy moment fast. You want gig speed internet from Xfinity. Watch Team USA with Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. Or get started with Xfinity 50 megabit per second internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. This offer ends March 31st. So go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Restrictions apply. Not available in all areas. New Xfinity Connect customers only. Equipment taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After one year, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gigabit internet and compatible gateway. Gig speed Wi-Fi is shareable across all devices. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Xfinity, proud partner of Team USA. Back to the action. It is eight to six. The Buffs on top of the Hurricanes. And the Buffs have the basketball. Jalen Lowe, guarded by Dot, moves to his left. You can tell how loud it is in here. Jalen Lowe stops near the top of the key. Gets the ball over there to Reedus. Now in the corner, three on the way, and good by Chris Catchings. That makes it 10 to 6. I guess it was a two. But back at the other end, Hightower launches a three. Aaron Williams makes it fly in from long distance, and it is 10 to 9. Marshall on top. Almost to travel by Ozine. Now a three on the way by Lowe, no good. And the rebound comes down to Hightower. It was grabbed by Davion Hanna. And you hear the voice of Ronnie Courtney, the legendary coach of the Marshall Buffs. 4.38 to go in the first. Ball to be inbounded underneath the basket to our right, the one that Hightower is shooting at. Hurricanes trailing 10 to 6. Doc gets it in. I'm obstructed a little bit. Aaron Williams, three is good. And Hightower on top the first time. It is 12 to 10. Hurricanes over the Buffs. Chris Marshall brings it across the timeline for Marshall. They're wearing the road blacks, and he launches a three from the left wing. Misses badly. It was way long. 12 to 10 Hurricanes, and Doc is fouled in the backcourt. I think Chris Marshall perhaps a little frustrated at missing that three. And he tried to make up for his mistake, but he got a little too aggressive in the backcourt. Hurricanes get it into the forecourt. Ja'Cory Chapman sends it over in the right corner to Aaron Williams, right in front of us, and he throws a pass that is picked off. Jalen Lowe picked it up after Chris Catchings deflected it. Lowe pulls up, left wing, can't get the three off and he can't get in close so he backs up a little bit McCain's playing good defense Lowe still has it now launches a three it's good the lefty bombs it in and it's 13 to 12 we might have two teams score 100 tonight it's not beyond the realm of possibility Kyron Dock moving to his right hands the ball off to Travion Hanna Hightower with the motion offense and Marshall playing the man-to-man. -to -man. Top of the key, three short, no good. Rebound, Reedus for the Buffs. And he throws it away. He was trying to get it to either Ozine or Jalen Lowe. Neither one of them saw it coming. And it went into the first row. 3.22 to go in quarter number one. And it is Doc with the basketball who brings it across the timeline. One hand pass into Ja'Cory Chapman. Now they go around the horn, Travion Hanna. There goes Aaron Williams, a little floater off the glass. No good, Marshall saves it, gets it to low. And here comes the Buffs pushing it. And it is Ozine whose alley-oop try is no good, but it's knocked out of bounds by the Hurricanes after Reedus got a hand on the rebound for the Buffs. Ozine will throw it in, gets it into Marshall. Makes a little move and rolls it in. Nice soft touch by the star football player who caught 13 passes during the regular football season, 11 of them for touchdowns. Nearly every game was a blowout during the regular season for the Buffs. 15 to 12, the Buffs lead it. Hightower working the ball around. Here's a dribble drive move and a travel by Ja'Cory Chapman. He took an extra step before he started dribbling. 2.37 to go in quarter number one. 
Chris Marshall in front of his team's bench near midcourt brings it in. Ozine to the backcourt between the feet. Dribble walks it up. Now gets it to Marshall who drives along the left baseline. Puts it up. Here's a whistle. And a foul is called. Hightower fans were thinking it might be a travel on Chris Marshall. But Chris will go to the line. This is one of those games where you might be thinking with a crowd like this, why wouldn't they put it in Hobson Fieldhouse next door as Marshall hits the first free throw. Makes it 16-12 buffs. Well, head coaches like to have a game on campus where they feel like they have a true home advantage. And Stephen Woods of the Canes did not want to go over to Hobson and really just kind of have a neutral site feel. Chris Marshall misses the second free throw. And here come the Canes trailing 16 to 12. Near the free throw line, a pass back out there to Aaron Williams. It's off the back iron, no good, but the Canes grab the rebound. Double team in the corner. I can't even see who has it. And the Buffs take it away. Jalen Reedus, Chris Marshall mugged near the right sideline. He's able to keep possession and draws a foul. Two oh four to go in quarter number one, and the Buffs leading 16 to 12. They have that 10 and 0 record in district play. Hightower is 10 and 1. So after tonight, Hightower has four more regular season regular season games, and Marshall has five. In the Class 5A state rankings, the Texas Association of Basketball coaches. Well, I'll get to that soon. But right now, I got to tell you what's going on in the court. Kyron Dock picks off a Marshall pass. Puts it down the floor. Come the Canes. Aaron Williams drives inside the arc. Shoots. No good. And now I'm having to stand on a chair just to see over the, the crowd. Omani Ozine. Little floater. It's an alley-oop pass to Chris Marshall who lays it in softly. And it's 18 to 12. Buffs on top. 137 to go. Hightower with an open shot. It is Joshua LaCour. And it goes in. One and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. It is 18 to 14, the Buffs on top. Ozine between the rings, sends it to low on the right wing, inside the arc, goes through the paint, puts one up, no good, rebound docked for the Canes. But he is gonna lose the ball in the backcourt. The Buffs have it, and then Catchings dives out of bounds. So Marshall would have had an easy putback, but Catchings couldn't secure the ball, it rolled away from him. I have a bunch of new friends here. 109 to go. The Canes trailing 18-14, and they bring it up. It is Javon Smith who's dribbling the basketball. He came in at the last break. Now Hannah with an entry pass. Knocked away, but the Canes do maintain possession. Javon Smith launches the three, and it's good. He got a one-point game, 18 to 17, and here comes Marshall, 45 seconds to go. Jalen Lowe, way out there, but not beyond his range. Pulls up, and a fadeaway two is good to make it 20 to 17. 35 seconds to go, here comes Hightower. Aaron Williams launches one. That's way long and no good. Ozine, the rebound for the Buffs, and the Buffs pushing, he got away with a double dribble. And a little floater inside, and it's Chris Marshall who scores to make it 22 to 17. 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. I can't see any bleachers anymore. All I see are people all over the place. Here comes Hightower, the ball knocked out of bounds. Marshall knocking it out of the hands of Jacory Chapman. Don't forget, you can always listen live or listen later on the podcast at VikeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. Ja'Cory Chapman to throw it in, just under 10 seconds to go. Looking, looking, looking. Finally gets rid of it, way back there to Aaron Williams, an over and back call, they missed it. Ja'Cory Chapman trying to shoot over Marshall, four seconds to go, now he drives to the free throw line, puts it up, ball tipped, no good, and that's how the first quarter ends, 22 to 17. Chapman goes down hard, we'll take a break. Glad you're with us on VikeFortBend.com. After one quarter, it's buffed by five. 
First Tire Automotive understands with the new year comes change. Well, we don't believe all change is good, so we are keeping our $15 off an oil change. So now's the time to head to the website, firsttireandauto.com, and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Welcome back inside the gym at Hightower, where after one quarter it is Marshall Buffs 22 and the Hurricanes 17. Hightower will get the ball first to start the second quarter. By the way, be with us at halftime. We got an interview that you're gonna wanna hear if you know a football player, if you are a football player, if you wanna be a football player, if you got a kid who's a football player. So here we go with Hightower driving around the right baseline. Javon Smith bounce pass inside shot missed by Joshua LaCour, but a whistle. And it looks like the Hurricanes drew a foul. You know, the PA announcer during that last break said everybody needs to go and find a spot in the stands. But I don't know that there are spots in the stands. It is absolutely a fire marshal's nightmare here on Hurricane Lane. Aaron Williams sends it to the left elbow and a shot in and out. And rebound comes down to Marshall after the shot was missed by Javon Smith. But Buffs missed one of their own. And here comes Hightower quickly down the floor. Chris Marshall picking the pocket of Ja'Cory Chapman quickly ahead. And the layup is good by Jalen Reedus. And it's 24 to 17. Sounds like a football score. Jaden Hughes brings the ball across the timeline, gets it over there to Javon Smith. Now a pick set for Ja'Cory Chapman, puts up the two, it's no good. Aaron Williams, one hands the rebound, gets it to Chapman who scores from the free throw line. It gets Hightower within 24 to 19. We've just started the second quarter. Jalen Lowe, kill a crossover dribble at work. And now he gets the ball to Catchings. Who moves inside the arc, pulls up at the left elbow, launches one, no good, rebound to Hightower. Almost losing it was Chapman, but there goes Ja'Cory all the way to the hoop. Jump stop, but he lost it. And Ozine quickly down to Chris Marshall. What a catch, but he has the ball knocked out of his hand. Now it goes out of bounds. Last touched, I think, by the Canes. Romani Ozine to throw it in for the Buffs. Quickly into low, quick release three from the left corner, no good. Rebound, takes a big bounce and comes down to Javon Smith. Here comes Javon through the heavy traffic and he got his pocket picked by Ozine. Ozine is bringing it back all the way to the other end. And a big runner with a left hand is no good. Catching the rebound, hits the floor hard. Ball goes out of bounds. Marshall fans want a foul. They're not gonna get it but the Buffs will get to keep the ball. Ozine slaps the ball, gets it into Marshall, quick release, three left corner, good. Around and down, the biggest lead for the Buffs. It's 27 to 19. Here comes Marshall, or Hightower rather. Jaden Hughes lost the handle on the ball. There's no handle on the ball. I don't know why I said that. And Ozine, three from the right corner is good. And a timeout taken by the Hightower Hurricanes. It's starting to get away from them. This is BikeFortBend.com. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. 
We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. All right, what an atmosphere. You know, it's one of those we could fill a lot bigger building if we had chosen one. No question about that. 30 to 19 is the score after a pair of threes by the Bucks. And here comes Hightower bringing the ball up the floor. Wow, it is just incredible what we see here. Aaron Williams fakes the three near the top of the key and runs down the left side of the lane, lays it off the glass. 30 to 21, Canes get within nine. There goes Jalen Lowe, gets inside, almost lost it, hands it off to Chris Marshall, and he scores. He drew the foul as he scored, and so he's going to go to the line. By the way, usually I tell you what we're going to be doing next week. And I will do this before the game is over. But right now, I am I only have eyes for this game as Joshua LaCour misses the free throw after Marshall saw it playing off the rim. Now here come the Hightower Hurricanes. Jaden Hughes kicks it over to Javon Smith, whose three is no good. Rebound fought for, and he goes out of bounds. Chris Catchings touched it last. I'll never forget this night. This is awesome. Jaden Hughes gets it in to Aaron Williams. Now to LaCour. Cross court. Gets it to Williams, who likes it from long range. And now there goes LaCour driving into the paint and scoops it up off the window. Good. 32 to 23. Canes trailing by nine. More than four and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Buffs get it into the forecourt. Ozine guarded by Doc. And throws it all the way into the right corner. Chris Marshall fading away, falls out of bounds and misses that three. Kyron Doc grabs the rebound for the Hurricanes. Here goes Kyron, but his bounce pass is picked off by Catchings. Buffs going back the other way, three on two. Catchings all the way off Marshall's hand. Marshall rebounds a miss and puts it in. Chris makes it 34 to 23 with four minutes to go in the first half. Hurricanes working it around the perimeter. Jaden Hughes has it. Dribble drive now pulls back, shoots a three off the back iron. No good. Rebound. Reedus for the Buffs. Here goes Jalen Lowe. Keeping the defenders away. Long bounce pass along the baseline. Now right wing three. Chris Marshall. Yes. 37 to 23. And a whistle. It's it's just because of Hightower substitutions. We got Milton Rice coming into the game for the first time and Ja'Cory Chapman coming off the bench. 14 point game. Hightower in its own gym. It is jam packed. Ja'Cory Chapman on the right wing. Sends it over on the left side to Jaden Hughes. Jaden Hughes trying to get away from Reedus. Now it is Devon Smith. And good defense. It's so good that the crowd is so loud I'm having to turn down the, the microphone. And while I was doing that, Ja'Cory Chapman scored from in close. But it's still an 11-point lead for the Buffs. 37 to 26, under three minutes to go in this first half and be with us at halftime because we're talking football something that's very important for high schoolers to know in this era of well transfer portal and everything else little baby hook inside Chris Catchings of the Buffs scores to make it 39 to 26 Hurricanes attacking they're a little bit smaller team especially since Caleb Douglas decided he didn't want to continue playing basketball because he's going to USC, his future is football. 
There is a foul inside as Javon Smith goes to the hoop. He's hit hard. The Marshall fans thought it should not have been a foul against the Buffs. But of course, they're not going to get their wish. So we are in Hightower's home gym, but we're closer to the Marshall rooting section. Javon Smith misses the first free throw. I want to thank my, my uh, producer, Les Clary, for making sure everything sounds good. Todd Freed, you know, he's the host of H-Town High School Sports. He's up in the stands. If he needed to leave, he couldn't. Free throw good, 39 to 27. High tower trailing the buffs. Jalen Lowe moves in on Kyron Dock. Side to side dribble, trying to shake off Dock. Now he moves to the left and dribbles the ball off his foot. It almost went out of bounds, but he saved it. Now he gets it into catching, but it's tipped away. Dock steals it, three on one, all the way to the hoop. It's no good, Chris Marshall is there as a defensive presence. The shot missed, Hightower does keep the ball, but a three on one, you should finish it off. Jaden Hughes, a little runner in the lane, rolls off no good, low the rebound. Here goes Jalen down the middle of the floor, pulls up near the top of the key, right side of the lane, gets his shot blocked. The shot is blocked and uh, let me ID the shot blocker. I believe it was Ja'Cory Chapman. By the way, one of the things in the countdown to tip-off show that Stephen Woods of Hightower said was in the first game at Marshall, the Buffs shot 32 free throws and Hightower only shot nine. We'll keep an eye on that as the game goes along. Jalen Lowe hits the first free throw, it's 40 to 27, and he also hits the second. 41 to 27, biggest lead for the Buffs, 14 points with 140 to go in this quarter, this uh, second quarter. Hightower on the attack, Ja'Cory Chapman kicks it out to Jaden Hughes, one and done. The missed shot is rebounded by Reedus. Gets it to Jalen Lowe, far sideline. Drives past Doc, puts it up, off the glass, too hard, no good. Rebound comes down to the Canes. Jaden Hughes gets to Kyron Doc. Behind the back he goes. Put up the layup, it's no good. Volleyballing of the rebound, goes out of bounds. Omani Ozin to bring it in for the Buffs, who lead by 14, trying to build on it now, and the Canes turn up a little bit more backcourt pressure, but Marshall, Chris Marshall, not bothered by it at all, walks across the timeline, between the feet dribble, thinking about a three, steps back, lets it fly, oh, it's good! 44 to 27, and the crowd's going wild here in front of the Marshall bench, and I should say, behind the Marshall bench. Chapman gets it to Doc. Doc to Javon Smith, all the way around the horn they go with it. Chapman looking for a three from the right wing. Trying to get around Chris Marshall, and Chris just takes it away. Jalen Lowe, over in the corner, Ozine, three. No, too long, no good. Rebound Keynes, less than half a minute to go. Here comes Hightower, Javon Smith has to alter his three. It's in and out, no good. Rebound Ozine, gets it to Chris Marshall. 18 seconds left, he slows down. He's still in the backcourt, 13 seconds to go. Chris Marshall, side to side dribble against Jaden Hughes. I bet he's gonna shoot right before the buzzer. Left elbow in the air, good! 46 to 27, a 19 point game. Desperation shot at the end of the half. And the Buffs are kicking butt right now. And they'll go, well they'll, I don't know if they can go to a locker room, but they're gonna go to some secluded place for about 10 minutes. They lead 46 to 27. We'll step aside and be back with our halftime interview with a guy you may know. It is Tony Thompson. He's an Elkins dad. He played college football at A&M for R.C. Slocum. He's got a son who has played in the NFL. He's got another one that's probably good enough to get there someday. We'll step aside, come back and listen to Tony Thompson when we return on BikeFortBend.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. 
Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Okay, it's halftime here on invitefootmen.com. This is a basketball broadcast, but we're talking about football right now with Tony Thompson, a well-known Elkins dad. His son, Corey, played at LSU and has played in the NFL, probably not done with his pro career. You got Blake Thompson, his other son, who is at Blinn Junior College right now, and also Braden Thompson playing baseball at Elkins. Welcome in, Tony. Thank you, Roger. I appreciate it. Well, you and another good buddy of yours who is also a dad of some fine athletes and was a fine athlete himself, Donnie Smith, have put together an idea that kind of addresses a problem. And the problem is that with the transfer portal being so active for college football players and also a class of players who during the COVID year were granted an extra year if they wanted it, so many kids who are freshmen and sophomores in high school just aren't getting looks. And what are you and Donnie putting together so that these players can get some eyes on them of, of people that are going to make decisions about recruiting? Sure. Well, a couple of things, Roger. Um, we put together, obviously, some workout weekends that we do. We just started back on our uh, Friday night regiments out at Cotton Ranch. Mm -hmm. Then uh, on Sundays over at St. Thomas High School where we run our uh, football workouts, if you will. So we've just started that back up to get guys ready for the upcoming spring and that kind of thing. But we've also taken the initiative to put together a uh, Texas Exposure Camp, which will be held on February 12th, also at St. Thomas High School. And the beauty of these workouts and camps is that we're affiliated, of course, with a lot of uh, college coaches, uh, folks that can kind of get the word out. Um, we've had Combine in the past, and we've had some, some big-name schools there looking at folks, and it's kind of helped with recruiting, you know. Um, a lot of times these kids did get passed over last year. My son Blake at Blinn got passed over on some things, but it's because of what, the way that the uh, transfer portal is right now. So what we're doing is giving these guys extra exposure. When I hear about the transfer portal, I don't know as many things about it as you do, but I guess the, the metaphor is low-hanging fruit. There are so many colleges that are just going to stock their rosters with players that were disgruntled at some other college and decide to make themselves available. And we want these kids that are still in high school to still get all of the attention that they've gotten. So I know this February 12th event is very important and you and Donnie Smith have put together this organization called Beast Mode Elite, BME, and it's called a camp, but it's really a combine, basically, right? Yes, that's correct. So we'll be out there doing drills, much like you see if you've ever seen the NFL combine or like a pro day workout at a college. These drills are exactly the same. They really don't change. So we go out there and we'll, you know, we'll get some 40 times. We'll, we'll get possibly some one-on-one -on -one drills done. We'll do a lot of individual work at their uh, individual positions. And this will allow for some folks to get some eyes on them and, you know, do some evaluation and possibly get these kids more exposure to some opportunities that they would not have had, you know, had we not had this combine. And you mentioned your son, Blake, and I don't want to put you on the spot here, but I'll bet you can answer this with a couple of anecdotal situations. You said that Blake got passed over, and he probably would be at a four-year school, but, you know, he's at Blinn right now, and, you know, he'll still probably be able to build a very good college career, but um, can you name another athlete or two that's fairly well known around here that uh, just hasn't gotten the opportunity they're really worthy of in college football? Well, let's back up. Uh, if you, if we take the example at Blinn, many years ago, a lot of people know that Cam Newton, who's an you know NFL veteran quarterback, uh, Cam started out at one school and ended up going to Blinn uh, to to Bloom, 
to grow. And then he transferred out of Blaine and went to Auburn. So from Auburn, of course, he went to the draft and has done very well in the NFL. So that's kind of the route we're talking about. But there are other, uh, there are a number of other kids out here, and I'm, I'm drawing a blank on names right now, but there are a number of other kids who have gone to different Texas junior colleges and have gone on to big four-year schools and have blossomed and played in the NFL and done very well. Um, so that's kind of the blueprint for some of our kids. Everybody's path is different. Some kids are going to go right out of high school. Some kids are going to go to junior college. Some kids, you know, are just phenoms. And, you know, they'll be three years and done in their school and right into the pro. So the thing is, the end goal is if you are going to spend that amount of time, that amount of work, getting up in the morning, out working guys, bypassing things, you know, when your other buddies are out having fun, you want to make it pay off. The payoff, parents and players, is a college education. That's the payoff. The benefit to that is if you can parlay that into a professional career, then you've won twice. But this is really about getting yourself in school, not you know, not hanging that big bill on your parents, and then still getting the opportunity to play in the NFL. We're talking with Tony Thompson. He is an Elkins dad. His son Corey has played pro football and is probably going to continue playing next year. And you also have Blake Thompson. We're, we're still waiting for him to get that chance at a four-year school right now. He's at Blinn. And uh, let's talk about what people, uh, you know, if people are listening to this, they either are high school athletes or they know somebody and would love to see uh, that young man, if he plays football, get a chance. And so tell us all about how to contact you or Donnie Smith and if they're interested in being there on the 12th of January, I'm sorry, February, 12th of February at St. Thomas to be a part of this combine. Sure. Uh, the easiest thing to do is, you know, go on social media, Instagram, uh, look for BME Beast Mode Elite. Uh, all the information is there. Uh, the flyer will be posted here pretty soon, uh, February 12th, St. Thomas High School. Um, it is a pre registered event. It is well run, very organized. And our information is on that on the uh, Instagram page. Uh, we have a web page that's being redesigned right now. So I want to direct everybody towards the Instagram page, Beast Mode Elite. And I think uh, it's pretty straightforward. I don't think it's anything confusing about it. Uh, we're going to go out there. We're going to you know, encourage the kids. We're going to get them warm. Uh, we'll take care of the kids and make sure that they understand why they're there and give them the opportunity to go out there and shine. All right, Tony, thank you. And by the way, just in case uh, you were not in a position to write that down or something, get in touch with me. I'll route you to Tony Thompson and Donnie Smith, and we'll get you hooked up and uh, tell you everything you need to know about this, this special event that's happening on February the 12th. It's, it's going to have a lot of great football talent. You know, some of these, these guys who were freshmen and sophomores in high school this year who really need to start building those reputations that will lead to the opportunity. Yep, it'll uh, it'll be one of those things where it starts out, you know, going into the spring season, everybody will be uh, ready to go for spring football. Should be a full go for everybody this year. Uh, and then, of course, the off season in the summer. That's, that's really where it's going to be important because you're going to have a lot of uh, university camps, you're going to have colleges coming in, uh, you're going to have the coaches coming back to the schools before school is out. So hopefully everything will return back to normal and uh, we can start getting our guys from the high schools back in where they belong. All right, that's Tony Thompson and I'd like to keep talking to you about this, but the third quarter is about to start here real soon. Thanks for being with us on our VibeFortBend.com halftime. We'll, we'll get uh, Get the word out to make sure that people know about what's going on with Beast Mode Elite. Thanks, Roger. I appreciate everything, and we'd love to see all the kids out there. All right. We'll be back on VipeFortBend.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. All right, the third quarter is underway, and I'm going to stand on my chair again so I can see 
what's going on in the game. 46 to 29, Hightower has the first basket of the third quarter. Jalen Lowe now shooting at this end. Little fadeaway rattles around and goes down through. So back to a 19 point lead for the Marshall Buffs, undefeated in District 24 5A and looking like the favorites tonight. Aaron Williams tries to find his shot, cross court, uh, cross court pass to Doc. Now Hightower continues to work it. Williams goes inside, has his pass batted down, stolen by the Buffs. Jalen Lowe down the far sideline, pulls up from the left wing. Does not shoot it, however. Now he drives the sideline, finds a man way out near the top of the key. Marshall launches a three high over the back of the rim, and it is rebounded by Reedus. And Reedus puts it in for the Buffs. The lead is now 21, 50 to 29. And you can bet that the Buffs are gonna go for 100 if they feel it, and they're probably feeling it already. Top of the key, Aaron Williams now over to Chapman, launches the three, misses badly. Bounces off and goes out of bounds. Well, I think it goes out of bounds, but I'm not even sure if the people are out of bounds. What a crowd. Six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter and the Buffs flexing their muscles thus far. Jalen Lowe trying to get a teammate to move around, looking for a pick. Marshall sets one for him. Lowe gets away from Doc, drives off the glass. It's a little too hard, no good. Rebound Travion Hanna for the Buffs or for the Hurricanes. Now Aaron Williams launches a three from the left wing. It's no good. Reedus grabs the rebound. Gets it to Chris Marshall. Looking down the floor, looking at his options. Holds the ball over his head, sends it to low in the corner. Left corner, three on the way, no good. Rebound, fought for. And the battle is won by Milton Rice of the Canes. Back come the Canes. Chapman, little underhand pass underneath. And it's an and one. Travion Hanna scores. But wait a minute, the basket does not count, but there is a foul before the shot was taken. By the way, I'm telling you, the, the ball could hit people before it goes out of bounds. Five forty-eight to go in the third quarter, and there's a bit of a delay as Coach Courtney is talking with the officials. By the way, I started to say, uh, I think sometime in the second quarter, and I got cut off by the action. Todd Freed, the host of H-Town High School Sports on CW39 and AT&T Sportsnet. It's powered by Vipe, by the way. He has a new show every Monday evening, and he is in the house, and he's set up at the top of the stands on the side where the players' benches are. I'm down here in... The lower right corner and we got a bunch of tall high school students and those who probably not too long out of high school are also here so I just have to stand on the chair so no basket on that play that just happened and it's not going to be free throws it's going to be Kyron Dock inbounding the ball slaps the ball looking inside heavy traffic Gets it into Aaron Williams, splits two defenders, gets to Milton Wrights. Short two-pointer, about a 12-footer, is good from the left wing. Lead back down to 19, 50 to 31. Ozine, long cross-court pass, Jalen Lowe catches and releases. No good, but Chris Marshall grabs the rebound and an easy putback for Chris. He's in Ja'Cory Chapman's face. 5.20 to go in the third quarter, it's 52 to 31. And there's Chapman with a three, he steps back correction. Aaron Williams hits the three and makes it 52 to 34. No look pass to Ozine in the corner. Correction, Reedus. Reedus gets the score. Makes it 55 to 34. And then Hightower quickly back down the floor. Sorry about that, uh, Jalen Reedus. You bag the three and... I don't know. I got no excuse. I'm sure you'll make another one before the game is over. 55 to 34 is our score. Quick inbounds pass and an easy two right there for Travion Hanna. Buffs had a little defensive lapse. 
Chris Marshall walks it across the timeline, meets a double team. Looking around, gets it to Catchings, top of the key, and over to Ozine. In and out, now back in with the three. 58 to 36, it's a 22 point game. Biggest margin there has been, but Aaron Williams launches a three. It's no good, rebound comes down to Ozine. He is fouled by Travion Hanna, who is trying to get a quick steal. You know, if the margin gets much bigger than 22 points, then maybe some of these people will decide they just want to go home. Jalen Lowe pulls up for a two-pointer left wing. No good. Rebound, Chris Marshall grabs it. Looking for someone winner than left elbow. Now back to Ozine, back to Chris. Jalen Lowe in the corner, on the way. Yes! 61 to 36, and that is the biggest lead, 25 points. All the way to the rack goes. It was uh, Corey Thompson, no good. And a little alley-oop to Chris Marshall. That makes it 63 to 36. Kyron Dock has it. Sends the ball over on the right wing to Corey Thompson. Not the son of Tony Thompson. That's another Corey Thompson, the one that has played for the Buffalo Bills. Corey Thompson and his brother, Cameron Thompson. They are the Thompson twins. Hold me now. It is 63 to 36. Some of you got that. Inbounds pass off the fingertips of Aaron Williams and out of bounds. So the Buffs led by 19 at half. And now they have expanded that lead to 27. Ozini, uh, I'm sorry, Ozine got away with a double dribble. He is being harassed there by Travion Hanna. It's a five second call and the basketball gods did the right thing. So the Canes get it back, Aaron Williams inbounds at the near sideline. Kyron Dock sends it back to Williams, top of the key, thinking about the three. Drives in, kicks it back out to Dock, left corner three, in and out, no good. Rebound Ozine. Here comes Omani right down the middle. Now he zags to the right, launches a three of his own. It's short. And the rebound to Hannah. Canes have it, but they were buried under a mountain of points, down by 27. There goes Dock. Now in the right corner, three on the way, long, no good. But a putback by Milton Rice. Gets the lead down to 25. It is 63 to 38. 38. Jalen Lowe to Ozine to Catchings. Pulls up at the free throw line. Marshall three from the left corner. No good. And the rebound to Dock for Hightower. Here come the Hurricanes. Long pass down the floor. And the beauty right to Corey Thompson. And he scores. But quickly back down the floor. Chris Marshall. Hammered as he goes to the hoop and he pushes Kyron Dock away. And the fans saying, the ones from Hightower saying that that should be a technical on Chris Marshall. Well, I guess he they let him off with a warning. As he goes to the free throw line, one of the officials says, you can't be doing that. And another official comes over and says, tuck in your shirt, young man. And he does. By the way, I think of the 11 Fort Bend ISD schools like 11 kids. I try to show them all as much love as I possibly can. I've never felt closer to my kids than I do here tonight. First free throw good by Chris Marshall. 64 to 40. You know, people keep turning around looking at me wondering why I'm talking to myself, but I'm not talking to myself. As if I am encroaching on their sound space. That's like people that move close to the airport and then complain about the noise of the airplanes. They're encroaching on me. Stolen by Chris Marshall. There he goes, going all the way to the hoop and lays it in to match the biggest lead. It's now 67 to 40, less than two minutes to go in the third. Corey Thompson, side to side dribble, Strop, stops in the free throw circle, gets the ball to Chapman, runs out of room, bounce pass, stolen inside by Jalen Lowe, and another example of the rule that needs to change. When someone throws a bounce pass off your foot, 
and you made no attempt to kick it, it shouldn't be a violation. You know, I talked to an official at the game between Travis and Austin the other night, and that's what he said. The rule book says if you didn't intend to kick the ball, it shouldn't be a violation. Jalen Lowe steals the inbounds pass. This catching two and a foul as he goes to the rack. And if he hits this free throw, it's going to be a 30-point lead. And I think the Buffs might be thinking about 100 points. They may never play Hightower again in a district game, or at least not for a long time, as Hightower is moving up into 6A play next year. So I don't think they need to hold back. Chris Catchings, free throw short, no good. 1.41 to go in the third quarter. Aaron Williams pulls up at the top of the key. Gets the ball to Corey Thompson. Cross-court pass back to Williams. Into the circle. Puts it up. Two-pointer in and out. No good rebound. Corey Thompson got a put-back opportunity but couldn't get it to go. Now Jalen Lowe grabs the rebound for the Buffs. Quickly inside and a beauty to Reedus. Oh, what a beautiful dime. Dropped right there by Jalen Lowe. And a turnover by Hightower right in front of the Marshall bench. And you got to believe they are giving them the verbal business. It's a 31-point game, still 117 to go in the third. And the Buffs are keeping the pedal to the metal. Coach Ronnie Courtney is up, and he is smiling. But Hightower steals the inbounds pass. And a timeout, a technical on Chris Catchings. It's a technical on Chris Catchings. You know, standing on this chair, I'm so far away from my phone, I can't really read it when I get a text. It's my buddy Les, as Aaron Williams shoots a technical free throw for Hightower. He'll get another one. Williams, next free throw in the air, good. Nothing but net. And we're back to a 29-point spread, but the Canes get the ball back. Corey Thompson wearing uh, shoes that are the color of a flamingo. Throws the ball in, gets it to Javon Smith. Now they send it over to the left corner. Aaron Williams trying to move in on Chris Marshall. Gets around him a little bit, but then gives up the ball. Corey Thompson shoots a two from inside the arc. Air ball. Rebound to Marshall as Ketchings grabbed it. Jalen Lowe moving through traffic, meets a double team, turns around. Oh, what a move, all the way into the paint, way short, no good. Off of Ketching's hands, but then knocked out, tipped out by Jaden Hughes of Hightower, and Marshall has the basketball. Ozine looking inside, Lowe almost fell out of bounds, gets it back to Chris Marshall, pulls up at the free throw line, way short, and the rebound to Ozine, turns around, hits the side of the backboard, Chris Marshall puts it up, rolls out, no good. Catching grabs the rebound, gets it to Ozine. Two and a foul! Corey Thompson called for the foul. He can't believe it. We're back to a 31-point lead with 31 and a half seconds to go in the third quarter. I was hoping for a close game, but Marshall has just really come of age. Now a big, massive substitution for Hightower. I'm not going to be able to name who went off, but I can tell you the guys on the floor, Joshua LaCour, Kyron Duck, Jaden Deemer in the game for the first time. Uh, let's see. Cameron Thompson. And I'm missing one of them. I know they have five guys out there. And Ja'Cory Chapman is one of them. And losing the ball. Ozine steals it away. There goes the Marshall guard. Hard to the rack, and Doc fouled him. With 20 seconds to go, it's a 32-point game, and we'll have free throws from Omani Ozine. Well, the Marshall fans are chirping, and they certainly have a right to their team. Certainly the superior one here tonight, and we're not even done with the third quarter. Ozine spins the ball for a shot. Good. Jalen Reedus comes off the bench, gets big congratulations from his teammates, head coach Ronnie Courtney and the assistant coaches. 
Trey Roberts is into the game for the first time. And the second free throw is good. It is 76 to 42, a 34 point spread in the final 17 seconds of this third quarter. McCour gives the ball to Cameron Thompson, drives the rack and a nice little close in shot, Jaden Deemer and an assist by Cameron Thompson. 76 to 44, Lowe launches one with two seconds left. No good, but no matter for the Marshall Buffs. It's 76 to 44, after three quarters, we'll take a break and be back. This is BikeFortBend.com. When you watch Team USA go for the gold, you don't just want Wi-Fi that's fast. You want Michaela Schifrin fast. You want Eat My Powder blink and you'll miss it. I ski faster than you drive fast. You want Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. Power all your devices and watch every single wow-worthy moment fast. You want gig speed internet from Xfinity. Watch Team USA with Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. Or get started with Xfinity 50 megabit per second internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. This offer ends March 31st. So go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Restrictions apply. Not available in all areas. New Xfinity Connect customers only. Equipment taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After one year, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gigabit internet and compatible gateway. Gig speed Wi-Fi is shareable across all devices. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Xfinity, proud partner of Team USA. What an extraordinary game. Marshall flexing its muscle against Hightower and not too many people knock Hightower around like this. 76 to 44 after three quarters. It's also an extraordinary situation because of the crowd. I've never felt so close to the people of Marshall in my life. So Hightower gets the ball to start quarter number four and they'll try to make the game a little bit closer. And there is LaCour with a shot from the right wing, or the right baseline, rather. It's no good. And a foul committed away from the ball by the Hurricanes. I'm not sure who was charged with it. Ozine to throw it in for the Buffs. Gets it into Chris Marshall. He's in the backcourt, taking his time. Chris down the far sideline, walking it up. LaCour is on him for... Hightower and Chris launches the three. Tried to put his defender to sleep. The shot was no good. Chris Catchings got the first look at the rebound, but Kyron Dock knocked it out of his hands as both of them were kind of crawling along trying to get it. Ozine to throw it in. Jalen Lowe has it. Left wing. Long way from the basket. Not even he would shoot it from there, but he's moving in on Dock. Now launches a two from inside the arc, obviously. I should never th say things that are so obvious. McCore the rebound for Hightower. There goes to Corey Chapman. Pulls up from the left elbow. Shot no good. Rebound bouncing around. It comes down to Doc. Now Chapman a three. It's too long. No good. Rebound to Ozine. Here come the buffs. Ozine goes all the way to the left and scores. Doc is knocked to the floor and slides into the pad behind the basket support. And no call. And a three on the way by Cameron Thompson is no good. One and done. There go the buffs. There is Ozine, and he's fouled by Chapman. Chapman wasn't going to let him get an easy one there. It's not even a foul. Ball goes out of bounds, but the buffs will keep it. It's 78 to 44. And a long pass to Chris Marshall. He saves it because he's... Tall, long arms, uh, almost nothing gets by him. Launches a three. Yes! And they have surpassed 80. It's 81 to 44. Six and a half minutes to go in the game. I think they're going to go for 100. Jacory Chapman of Hightower gets it to LaCour. Around the horn they go. It's in the left corner. Cameron Thompson and a reach in foul on Jalen Lowe. I'm so glad nobody called the fire marshal. If they had, they would. he would have just come in and said, this is not safe. Everybody's got to leave. Doc with the two-pointer. His foot was on the line. 81 to 44. Buffs leading it. 
Ozine guarded by Cameron Thompson. Side to side dribble to get around him into the forecourt. Chris Marshall thought about the 35 foot three. Now he steps forward a little bit. Now he launches one, it's short. He wanted a foul. Deemer might have gotten a piece of the ball on that one. Chapman between the feet dribble. He launches a three for Hightower. It's no good, rebound Chris Marshall. Here he comes down the floor and he's hit in the backcourt by Cameron Thompson. And we're gonna have a one and one because the number of fouls committed by Hightower is over the limit of seven. Okay, I guess it would be a good time to tell everybody about our next broadcast involving these Marshall Buffs. Chris Marshall taking his time, massages the basketball, first free throw, good. 82 to 47. You know the Buffs would like to score more than twice the number of points that the Hurricanes have. Next one by Chris is good. 83 to 47. 547 to go. Tyron Dock for Hightower. Gets it to Chapman, shoots the three, that's good. Chris Marshall kind of backed off of him there. Now Ozine, moving the ball up the near sideline, back to the middle of the floor, there he goes all the way to the rack. And the foul is either gonna be on Cameron Thompson or perhaps uh, could also be on, sorry this is taking me so long, Joshua LaCour. Well, we don't have any more regular season broadcasts involving the Marshall Buffs planned because we don't think they're going to have any trouble with any of their remaining five opponents as Ozine hits the first free throw to make it 84-50. to 50. So uh, Marshall fans will probably just uh, catch up with you in the playoffs. Ozine, second free throw, good. 85 to 50. And coming into the game is Chase McKenzie, the sophomore. Very talented guard. And he picks up Kyron Dock as he moves across the midcourt stripe. Now LaCour has it. Cameron Thompson, Jacory Chapman long three, too long. Rebound Chris Marshall. Side to side dribble to make sure that he doesn't get the ball taken away in the backcourt. Going around Cameron Thompson. Keeps on driving. And I think we've got a foul on Cameron Thompson. And Cameron Thompson is making the mistake of talking to Marshall students. There's going to be a problem if he keeps doing that. Plus his team is down by 35. Meanwhile, Chris Marshall is at the free throw line and now the officials are, looks like they're thinking about telling the students to step back. Chris hits the first free throw. 86 to 50 is our score. He'll get another one with 5.06 to go. Chris Marshall massages the basketball. In and out with the second one and the rebound to Deemer. Gives the ball to Kyron Dock, right down the middle of the floor. Left wing, Deemer, no, LaCour rather, steps inside the arc and hits a two. It's 86 to 52. Jalen Lowe with it, Kyron Dock guarding him, just those two in the backcourt. Now Lowe gets it across the stripe. Swats the hand away, now moves to the right elbow, kills his dribble. Trey Roberts gets it to Chris Catchings, spin move. And a little left-hander, no good. Rebound to Deemer for Hightower. LaCour now to Doc. Back to LaCour. Correction, Deemer. Two-pointer from the free throw line is no good. Chris Marshall launches a three. In and out, no good. Rebound, Catchings. Catchings turns around to the free throw line and hits. Yes, it is 88 to 52. And we're not halfway through the quarter yet. 4-10 to go. Jaden Hughes guarded by Trey Roberts. A pick sets him free. Killed his dribble, Javon Smith. Now it is LaCour, his three is good. Not much cheering from the Hightower fans. 
whose team is getting shellacked. Here goes Jalen Lowe, pulls up for a two, no good. Rebound grabbed by Deemer, hands the ball to Doc. 88 to 55 is our score. Here's a nice little spin move and Chris Marshall called for goaltending. He swatted the basketball, Jaden Hughes put it up off the glass and Chris Marshall pinned it to the glass. And you can't do that. Ricky Eaglin is in the game for the Buffs. So you got McKenzie, Roberts, Low, Eaglin, and Chris Marshall on the floor for the Buffs. Three and a half minutes to go. McKenzie guarded in the backcourt by Javon Smith. Now gets it to Jalen Low. Looking past his defender. Now backs up a little bit. Here comes the double team. Tries to dribble around it. He goes to the corner. And a foul called on Jaden Hughes. Jaden Hughes right here in the corner surrounded by Marshall fans. And a timeout is taken. Not sure who took it. It might have been the Hightower Hurricanes. That would make more sense. We'll be back. This is VibeFortBend.com. Buffs in command. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Marshall is shooting free throws with 319 to go in the game. They're at 89 points, 89 to 57. Jalen Lowe, free throw good. He hit two to make it 90 to 57. Kyron Dock moves into the forecourt for Hightower. Gets the ball to Jalen, Jaden Hughes, and he pops the baseline jumper for two. Now here comes the Buffs offense. Jalen Lowe trying to move around Doc. There he goes. Through the free throw circle. Kills it at the elbow and a hot pass that flew out of bounds. I don't know if he intended that for Ricky Eaglin or for Chase McKenzie. One or the other. But we're under the three minute mark and the Buffs need ten more points to get to the century mark. There goes Javon Smith. Drives in and he's fouled by McKenzie. So I've seen some crazy things happen at these high school sporting events. I saw a volleyball match as uh, the first free throw by Javon Smith of Hightower is missed. Um, the Ridgepoint girls went to George Ranch on a Tuesday and all the football players from both schools showed up and it was not just a dog pile at the end of a regular season volleyball match by the Ridgepoint girls, there were, the Ridgepoint football team went out there and the George Ranch folks did not uh, appreciate that. Jalen Lowe through the traffic, McKenzie three on the way yes, I think you know what happened it's 93 to 60 we got 238 to go they like that little Chase McKenzie. And what's not to like? Javon Smith goes in. Two and a foul. He's hacked in the act. It looks like there might be a few people who have decided to go home, but they're all Hightower fans. Javon Smith misses the free throw. And nice put back by LaCour. Makes it 93 to 64, the lead is under 30. Cross court pass, 
Here comes Jalen Lowe into the forecourt. McKenzie, another one. It's too long, no good. By the way, in the game for uh, Marshall, you got Damian Rasco. And there's a nice move by Kyron Dock all the way to the window and scores. Pass to Trey Roberts into the forecourt. Loses the basketball. Javon Smith has it. Weaving through traffic. And a nice pass on the side of Jaden Hughes. He thought he was fouled. Ball gets away. Jalen Lowe has it. It's a three on two. Jalen all the way to the rack and the ball knocked out of bounds and it belongs to the Buffs. They need seven more points to get to the century mark. And that's really the only question that we have. Jalen Lowe has it, three on the way. Yes! It is 96 to 66. There is Javon Smith for Hightower with a three of his own halfway down and no good. Eaglin the rebound for the Buffs. Gives it to Jalen Lowe. Less than a minute and a half left. Jalen Lowe from 40 feet. No good. That would have, that would have gotten a reaction. Jaden Hughes passes up the three, drives to the hoop. Jalen Lowe blocks him. There's a whistle, goes out of bounds. It belongs to the Buffs. They need four more points to get to the Magic 100. But if they get there, Jalen Lowe will not be on the floor. They just took him out. Yeah, he can take the rest of the night off. He's played pretty well. Into the game comes Ellery Jones. Chase McKenzie bringing it up against Doc. Side to side dribble. Here goes Chase into the forecourt. Still has it. Still dribbling. Moves to his left. Now moves to his right. Pulls up at the free throw line. Short. No good. Rebound Doc. Doc is obstructed by McKenzie, but he somehow gets the ball to Javon Smith. There goes Javon. And a reach in foul, apparently, by Damian Rasco of the Buffs. 49.47 seconds to go, and now it looks like fans from both teams are, some of them are deciding to get to their cars and beat the traffic best that they can. Javon Smith's free throw for Hightower is good, 96 to 67. And now you got students wanting to walk out in front of the bench. You can't do that. You can't walk in front of the bench. Can you, Mr. Security Man? No, you can't do that. You can't walk in front of the bench if you're not a player. And the second free throw is good by Javon Smith. Here come the buffs. Chase McKenzie into the forecourt. He's got an open look, but the ball got away from him for a second. He backs away, and he stepped on the sideline. Oops. Something tells me now they're not going to get to 100. 41.63 seconds to go, however. Javon Smith moves into the forecourt for Hightower. There's a spectator just walking across the court. Javon Smith misses the free throw. Trey Roberts the rebound. Hands to McKenzie. I don't think they're going to shoot anymore. I think they're just going to dribble it out. McKenzie trying to get into the forecourt. He does. Spinning. 18 seconds. Side-to-side -side dribble. Still dribbling. Chase McKenzie can dribble. Then he gets it to Eaglin, who gets it right back to McKenzie. Eight seconds to go. This is going to be the end. Four seconds. Marshall enjoying a big, easy win over Hightower, 96-68. to And just for fun, McKenzie throws the ball toward the hoop after the buzzer goes. All right, so we're going to have some crowd control here. I saw something uh, I've never seen. I just saw a girl walk across the court while the game is still going on. What kind of world are we living in? I'm, I'm just kidding. It's not that big a deal, I don't suppose. But it shouldn't happen. Anyway, uh, I'm going to take a quick break and be back on BikeFortBend.com.
First Tire and Automotive understands with the new year comes change. Well, we don't believe all change is good, so we are keeping our $15 off an oil change. So now's the time to head to the website, firsttireandauto.com, and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. When you watch Team USA go for the gold, you don't just want Wi-Fi that's fast. You want Michaela Schifrin fast. You want Eat My Powder blink and you'll miss it. I ski faster than you drive fast. You want Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig, power all your devices and watch every single wow-worthy moment fast. You want gig speed internet from Xfinity. Watch Team USA with Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. Or get started with Xfinity 50 megabit per second internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. This offer ends March 31st. So go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Restrictions apply. Not available in all areas. New Xfinity Connect customers only. Equipment taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After one year, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gigabit internet and compatible gateway. Gig speed Wi-Fi is shareable across all devices. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Xfinity, proud partner of Team USA. This VibeFortBend.com presentation of the game between the Marshall Buffs and the Hightower Hurricanes has been brought to you tonight by Xfinity, the future of awesome. My first Tyrant Automotive with four great locations in Fort Bend County for the best prices on tires and everything else your vehicle needs to run at its very best. Visit FirstTyrantAuto.com. By Archer Volkswagen on the Southwest Freeway just inside the Sam Houston Tollway. They've been open since 1956, and they're ready to serve you. You'll feel like family when you're at Archer Volkswagen. And by the Needville Insurance Agency. You'll get the very best rate on your car and home insurance when you put the Needville Insurance Agency to work for you. Bradley Stavanaugh and his team shop dozens of carriers so you can pay the lowest premium possible. So call the Needville Insurance Agency at 979 979- 793-7411 or you can go to NeedvilleInsurance.com Well, there's just not that much to say about what happened tonight other than the Marshall Buffs are the best team in District 24-5A They still have five regular season games but uh, they're just, they're not touchable by anyone other than Hightower and they clearly show that they're the superior team over this Hurricanes team that Year in and year out usually is the best team in this district. And you also had the layer of the story that the Marshall Buffs and Hightower Hurricanes are not going to be playing each other in district basketball games for at least two years as Hightower is going to move up into Class 6A and possibly possibly be playing Fort Bend ISD opponents. So the thing for me to do is kind of tell you what we have coming up next week. And I think I have made a decision, although it was not an easy one. On Tuesday night, we're going to have the game at Elkins between the Clements Rangers and the Host Knights. Elkins still undefeated in leading District 26A, but Clements playing great basketball, and I don't know what they did tonight, but going into the night, they were tied for second place in the district with the Ridgepoint Panthers uh, prior to the game tonight. 
Um, Clements and Ridge Point both with two losses, and Elkins undefeated, I believe, at 8 and 0 in district games. And then next Friday, it'll be Travis at Clements, and then we'll come back to Hobson Fieldhouse, just a few hundred feet from where I am right now as I speak to you. And we will have the game between Ridge Point and Elkins. They played at Hobson the first time, and Elkins won big, and Ridge Point really wants to give them a better game this time. All right, well, that will do it from here at the High Tower Gym. Our final score, Marshall 96 and the host High Tower Hurricanes 68. Roger Smith, glad to be with you. Thank you so much for listening. Tell your friends. I know some of you folks who could not get into this crowded gym might have decided, okay, well, I guess I can listen on VibeFortBend.com. All right, so for Les Clary, Merle Bertrand, Suna Venkat, Patrick Kinnick, and the entire VibeFortBend.com team, thank you so much for listening, and we will talk to you on Tuesday night when we bring you the game between Clements and Elkins. Good night, everybody.